Right. The toy box checking out the I guess current status of everything. There's, big ass, there's a big ass pipe. Yeah, I saw that. Look at that. <laughs> I thought we could put like a one by four on here. Just, just back it on. We got the base tape. Okay. And then drop the holes down there. You see? All right. That's an idea. So we got to move these lifts today so they can get access to those lights. You can see that these are the new ones and the old ones. Much brighter. Much nicer quality. Got the big ass fan in there. We're working on the air ducts because we are going to do HVAC here. So we're on that today. It's looking good. Alright, I'm gonna run out on these lifts and talk about moving them and stuff. Alright, I couldn't film much because we were talking about things. We got these moved out of the way so we can get access to these lights. Soft mounts are gonna look, look like those lights. We got the HVAC. Pretty much fully plumbed. We're just finishing it up right now. The action overhead garage, we're going to put a control panel and some remotes on the wash bay door. We came up with a better solution for inside the uh, mechanical room. We're going to get rid of this hot seat pressure washer and go towards, we'll go with the Krenzel. Like what uh, like I have, what Matt has. And we're going to keep everything within that little room. So it'll help keep this wall nice and clean. And we just measured for cabinets in here because we're going to have we're going to put a refrigerator in here and have this kind of be like a snackateria we have a refrigerator up against this wall shelves and cabinetry and countertop coming over here and then coming out in front of underneath this window we got security on everything so we got every, everything all marked up and have cameras installed here and it's going to be pretty good big ass fan is going to get uh, Set up on Monday. This bin pack things, we'll put those back once that is done. And I'm guessing we'll have cars in here probably by the next end of next week. So yeah, exciting stuff. No, as I was just leaving, I just saw this. Damn. Look how sweet this cayenne looks when you first get in it. All right. All right. Morning, everyone. It's early right now. It's not, it's not too early. It's only late. It's all right. It's before eight. What am I talking about? I am heading to work right now, and then gotta head over to the toy box to meet a bunch of guys at the shop. And we are gonna head to the toy box and do a bunch of cleanup. We're gonna bring a kind of a floor scrubber. Ooh, I should bring my brooms. Bring that later. <coughs> ah, shoot. <coughs> I haven't been bringing the camera around too much because we've just been doing these little smaller projects that add up. So I, I've filmed a little bit. Yeah, I haven't posted anything on YouTube, but I recorded them and you know, it, it adds up pretty quick. So with the toy box, the things that we have done recently, we got all four lifts installed. Just yesterday, my dad and I went there and adjusted them, put them where we would need them to be. And we uh, kind of set everything up. So we got HVAC now, that's all set up. You know, the heating and air, the ventilation is in for all the rooms. That one wash bay wall is 100% complete. We changed up uh, some electrical locations. We got all the big ass lights installed, big ass fan is installed. We tested that all last night. I think I think moves some air. You know, I always see them at like Costco and places like that where they're on, you know, an extremely low setting. And even at that, so it goes by percentage, you know, zero to 100. And even at 10 percentage, uh, the thing was pushing some air. So we put it up to 50 and it was like, it's pretty impressive. Anyway, so that's in. So today we're just gonna do a bunch of cleanup prep. We're hoping to move in there um, within the next week, I'd say. 
I have a bunch of stuff from Obsessed Garage on order. I ordered a, I have the Krenzel pressure washer for my house, you know. And I ordered a, the same thing for the toy box and figured why not. We ordered almost the entire setup. So I got, I got the shelf coming. I got the Cox reel coming. I got the whole, or the, what's it called? I guess it'd be the wand holder, harness holster, I don't know what you want to call it, that's coming in, and I heard some of the, you know, stuff that's pretty cool, you don't really need, like the stainless inlet, the bucket filler, things like that, so we need to you know, figure out a way to prep that wall to accept or to mount everything, right now it's just, it's, it's open wall, we don't have any metal panel on there or anything, so we want to have a metal panel on there eventually, obviously so it you know, cosmetically looks right. So we need to figure out the proper layout for all of that. And I won't know until I have all the stuff, which is coming in today's two, today's Wednesday, it'll be here tomorrow. All right, I'm gonna put the camera down. I'll film when I get there. So again, I'm heading to work right now. Should be at work in 15 minutes. And then we're gonna load up everything. We're gonna bring the grill over there also, you know, in case you wanna have some cookouts while we detail or just hang out. Haley cabinets, those guys are not getting back to me yet because we we had, we had the layout set for the wash bay area, but we wanted to add it for that little office that we're going to have the refrigerator in. It's kind of a kitchenette type thing, basically a staging room for, I don't know, food. So we're going to have Haley cabinets in there also, and I gave them the dimensions. They haven't got back to me. Anyway, uh, yeah, there's still a couple stuff more to go, a couple hoops to jump through, but we're getting there. Yeah, we've been working on that. Alright, here's the current state. You can see we replaced these panels over here. You can see a little bit of a color difference. You know, these things got them all pretty straight, I think. Shut this door. Got a new secure security system. That cool gives you the weather. Got the big ass fan on. We added the HVAC, so that's what that's what this is. Heat in the summer, AC or I'm sorry, heat in the winter, AC in the summer. Obvi. It's kind of as a as a backup to this radiant heat in case this ever fails. This thing moves some air for sure. I can feel it right here. Got all four lifts ready to go. Let's leave cars on them. This is getting our little kitchenette ready over here. Those chairs and tables came with the building. We're gonna we gotta pull this out of here. I should probably do that today too. Because we're not gonna utilize this. They were supposed to do that. We could probably do that though. We gotta get this out of here too, probably this wand. I know. We gotta we'll jimmy that up. Pull the wand, so we're gonna have to get that off pulled. Here's where the kitchen that's gonna be. So the refrigerator is gonna be in this corner. And then we're gonna have cabinetry and countertop come right up to here. And then we have uppers, and then this is gonna go just countertop on this side. Got a water line in there, see that? Well, Nothing new in the bathroom. This just needs to be clean. Added the uh, HVAC vent. Got to plug that. Should have brought the uh, door chocks or something. We can probably figure something out though. In here, they replaced that panel because it had the holes, if you remember. Now, this one we have an idea. We have also new water softening system wash cars. This is where that pressure washer was. What we're gonna do is kind of take that waterproof paneling that's out by the wash bay. We're gonna put that right here and we're gonna mount the um, pressure washer with the cox wheel right here and then down here we're gonna have this little spout spill into one. Spill into one instead of two. We're gonna mount that right about here. Then we're going to have a traditional style holes reel like at my house right there. So 
I'm gonna work on getting this out of here. Um, we can probably do that. We got tools here? Yeah, we do. Okay. Got a bunch of tools. Don't want to cut yourself on that. Yeah. Here's the old pressure washer we're getting out of here. Oh, is that going to be tossed out? Alright, let me help you guys. Today we're going to blow everything, we're going to scrub it, mop it. Just kind of, just kind of keep on, kind of keep on top of the mess. Sick. Okay, we got it swept. We're going to jimmy rig this ladder so we get access to garage door opener so we can put a access panel or pad I guess you could say on the outside so this is going to be a little sketchy after this we're going to mop we got a bunch of the yellow things that were down here put up put up there pause excited yeah Yeah, do you want to go more directly below it? We come back up. There you go, then go that way. You go. Uh, I'd go more. Actually, that's probably good. You try that. That's probably good, but hang on, let's, let's go forward a little bit. Like three feet. There you go. That'll work. I hope. I'm going this in case something happens. Doing that. Pubes is the first car in here. Alright, we should probably turn this fan off, huh? Okay, she's coming together. We got I'll show, I'll show you. So I emailed Haley. This is our old pressure washer. I tried selling that. If anybody wants it. Emailed Haley instead of having the refrigerator in this little kitchenette office area which is what this is. We're just gonna outfit this entire place with uh, more Haley cabinets. So it'll be 116 inches by 86 to here. You know, open cabinets and microwave and stuff like that in here. Then had the refrigerator right there. So we gotta plumb this water line on the other side of this wall. And they gotta come through and do some sheetrock repair in here. We got some sheetrock repair in here, one more panel to replace. You can see the difference between the ones with the holes and the ones with the hole. And we think that they had some type of water line coming through here and it froze. So that's why they eliminated it with dust, the holes. Uh, and then we, got, we have a plan for this. We got to wait for obsessed garages in order to, to deliver. So, we got some nice heat in here now. Lifts all look good. Fan looks good. <laughs> Ouch. We're gonna put this material on this wall. So, that's, so we're gonna have the pressure washer right here and a uh, standard hose reel right here with the Cox reel with the pressure washer also on there. So a little bit of water uh, could get splashed on here. So we're just gonna kind of try to prevent any damage by having this material. 
on that wall. We'll just carry it. <laughs> so we don't hit our heads on these things. That wouldn't feel very well. So pretty soon we're gonna have cars up, cars down. It's gonna be sick. Okay, back at work. Uh, I got a text from Kevin at Classics. So I had the white Camaro set to be picked up yesterday and the gray one. They finished both of them for me. And I took the white one out. Uh, it didn't even last a quarter of a mile before I was already turning around to bring it back to Classics. Nothing nothing wrong with it, but it just the pedals didn't, didn't feel right to me. The clutch was not engaging how I guess I'd prefer the brakes felt great so the new ones that we put in there were fine the gas pedal is what really throws me off and it was I don't know it was I don't know how to describe it it felt similar to what a factory like Corvette C1 style it feels like if you guys are familiar with the old classic cars it wasn't you know like, like this Porsche it's you have a pedal that basically pulls onto a cable from what I understand and that, that's what controls the you know your throttle and this one felt like I was pushing on a button and I just had a a pedal that was just physically pushing onto a button uh, doesn't make for a very easy or fun drive so I turned around grabbed the gray one which is now in my garage and I'm heading to classics right now because we want to talk about options I am considering just cutting my losses with it. I've been talking with Porsche about trading the white one. It should be worth about the same. They have a black 911 Turbo S there on the show floor. Uh, it'd be pretty cool to have one of those. It's a coupe, not a convertible like the white one that we just bought. So a little bit different. And, you know, modern and no issues is what, what I'm going after. The gray one, after that Hydro Boost, I think is perfect. It drives like this. It's, it's responsive, it's fast, it's, the brakes are insanely good like a modern car uh, so I don't know do I need a Camaro that I don't know if I can trust it looks really sweet we did a lot of work to that thing but I don't know we'll, we'll see how much more work it's gonna be to get these to get this pedal situation figured out because if I have to dump another you know four grand in, into it I might as well like I said cut my losses and, and get something that I can really enjoy without I don't know, because at the same time I'm going to have to add money for the Porsche. This should be worth about the same, but you know, the, these older classic cars, they're only worth as much as someone's willing to pay, and you don't know that without going to an auction or, or having a buyer ready. It's tough. It's not like, like this Cayenne, for example, if I wanted to trade this in tomorrow, I can you know, get a buy bid in, in minutes versus finding a pretty unique buyer for a classic car, especially one as custom as that. So again, we'll see. We'll see how much work is needed to make it how I want it. We'll go from there. All right, just left Classics. I didn't bring you guys in there because, well, I don't know why. But we looked at the pedals. They're not what I thought they were. They are, you know, it's not like an electric one like these ones where it's just an electric throttle. I guess I don't know. It pulls off of a cable. But the issue that I was feeling is the pedal was not, it, it's, it's basically it's broken, it's, it's rocking, which it's, it's normal because it's supposed to keep the, you know, the palm of your foot on the pedal and then it kind of rocks with it. I don't like the way that feels. And also we were only able to use like, they said like half or two thirds the 
amount of throttle that I should have been able to because the pedals it's either broken or hung up somewhere anyway so nothing wrong with the car just like the way that the pedals were are set and then replacing them to like a Clayton or something similar it's easier said than done so we're gonna try to modify the existing pedals the clutch I can live with uh, the brake is fine it's basically it's mainly the, the gas pedal that was weird and they felt it too so we're gonna, we're gonna again we're gonna modify that make it a little more not make it a little more we're gonna make it stationary so it's not gonna rock and then we're gonna make it more responsive and then hopefully allow it to use uh, you know 100% of its capability instead of 60 or whatever it is so that's the update on the white one I'm waiting for a call back from Porsche for a trade value but you know if they if worst case scenario I just end up uh, bring it to like Bear Jackson Scottsdale or something like that where I bought it and auction it off for hopefully more than I paid for it, hopefully more than I have into it. I paid a lot of money for it and I put a lot of money into it too because I've said this in other videos, the cars you buy online are not always exactly how they seem. It's not like a new car where you know what you're getting. You know, you're working with someone else's work who could have had multiple shops, multiple different opinions or guys working on it. I don't know. It, it is what it is. You just you got to expect that. So hopefully now that it's basically turned key or will be turned key after this. Worst case scenario, if I don't get you know a good bid from Porsche and I don't want to keep it, I, my goal is to keep it. Obviously, I don't buy these things to sell. It's disheartening and deflating when they don't turn out the way that you want them. But you know you can make it how you want. You just have to dump a ton of cash into it, which is what I've done. And like I said earlier, I'm debating just not doing that anymore and cutting my losses and getting a uh, you know modern sports car for myself. Even though my dad and I share all the sports cars, but you know. Uh, anyway, okay, so I'm gonna end that there. I've, I don't know when I'm gonna make one of these videos. I have I have probably like two weeks worth of footage, just small clips like this of me updating and talking that I haven't done anything with because I don't know if that's something you guys even care to see. But eventually I'll put this and all the other clips into into a video for you. So, okay. Well, my day is pretty much going to be all work now. So, as always, I appreciate you guys watching. Any suggestions for videos, let me know. The weather is still really shitty here in Minnesota. You know, one day it's 60 and sunny. The next it's 37 and rainy. And then today it's... There it is, it's 60 and rainy. But tomorrow's gonna be nice, so maybe I'll drive the Camaro. Hopefully they can get that, maybe I'll do that. I'll, I'll, I'll push them, I'll, I'll, I'll push them, I'll see if they can get that white one ready for tomorrow. Then I can drive that. We have a game plan for the gray Camaro because the shift points are strange on that even though I gave it to, I think it was called Cannonball Camaro or I don't know, whatever David and Brandon Musselcar decided to have the car, have the great Camaro tuned for several weeks. It was like four or five weeks that they had it. And it still drives kind of like shit. But anyway, this is a local guy here who's really good with the LT4. And he'll change the shift pattern. He'll get rid of that uh, check engine light, which we decided or came. There, there's like four fault codes, and they all point to the fuel pump. So hopefully he can solve that. He says he can. Uh, I'm not really looking to get the most power out of that car. You know, if I want if I want to drive something fast, I'll drive the Porsche or one of the Ferraris. I just want it to be. I want drivability. I want it to have smooth, consistent shifts. I want it to be dependable. All I have to do is oil change. You know, once a year. That's my goal. So that'll be done in June or so. In the meantime, I'm just going to drive it. See if anything else pops up. So Porsche just got back to me with a buy bid on the white Camaro. Sixty. 65000 That is crazy. $65,000. I mean, I think this thing could get upwards of like two fifty dollars at Bear Jacks. I'm not going to lie. I paid a lot more than 65000 for it, and I have probably about that into it. Just on uh, repairs, modifications, enhancements, things like that. So, no 911 Turbo S for me. Uh, which is fine because I when I when I went there I was like man this thing is really you guys haven't really even seen it that much, um, it's 
it's such, such a badass car and I just as soon as it runs right it runs right as soon as it feels right while driving then it's gonna be there'll be keepers and yeah so that's today's update hopefully that wasn't boring uh, as always appreciate you guys watching stay tuned for more videos thanks